Oh, well, that's not what I was expecting. <laughs> it left zero impression on me. But they are neither mercenaries nor librarians. It succeeded in the endeavor of being a Western, of Gandalf fame. Hey guys, it's Leanna and I'm here today with my June wrap up. I have nearly done it. <laughs> I'm filming this a little bit early, but I have filmed, filmed, what am I saying? I've read every book that was on my TBR except for Dark Age, which I have started and Dark Age is a reread anyway, which I'm rereading or freshening up on for the Red Rising read along chat on Alan's channel. So uh, he's finally made it to Dark Age, invited me to talk about it. So I wanted to refresh myself, but I have read it already. So that's all I've left to do. And as I said, I'm filming this a little bit early, so I will be spending the rest of June, what's left of it, refreshing myself on Dark Age. So I felt that I could film this now. So here we go. The first book that I read in June was The Black Tongue Thief by Christopher Buhlman. I do have a full review of this on my channel. So if you want my full thoughts, go ahead and check that out. Briefly, um, I really enjoyed this. I only gave it three stars though, because I didn't think it was all that amazing. I didn't think it was great. I just had a fun time with it. So. Again, if you want to know more about what was fun or why I liked it or didn't love it, that full review is up. But again, I would, if you're interested in this, I would say go ahead and definitely, 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 if you're going to read this, do it on audio. The audio is chef's kiss. The next book that I read was Empire of Silence by Christopher Rocchio. And this is a buddy read. Um, I read it with Alex from Alex Nieves and he and I chatted about this live on my channel. Um, so the, li the replay of that is available for you to view. Suffice to say though, he and I loved this book so much and he and I will be buddy reading the second book which is The Howling Dark in July and the review, the discussion will be on Alex's channel. But yeah, this is a space opera if the cover didn't already clue you into that. And it is, it, it is such a strong debut and it is one of the best books that I've read for sure this year and just also generally one of the best books that I've ever read. Highly, highly recommend if you enjoy an epic space opera. Um, I do think if you like Red Rising, then you will love Empire of Silence because as the debuts go, this is way stronger than Red Rising was. The series Red Rising ended up, has become one of my favorites. Uh, but what we've heard me and Alex that the rest of the series is even better. The Empire is the weak one. So, and, and this book was five out of five stars, 10 out of 10, Chef's Kiss would recommend. So if this is the weak one, I mean, oh, I'm very, very excited. The next book that I read was The Tempest by William Shakespeare. This is obviously a play. And as I mentioned in the TBR video, my friend Heather and I will be chatting about The Tempest as well as Hag Seed, which is in my stack, which is a retelling of The Tempest. Because um, I have, for a long time, I've wanted to read the play and the retelling, the play and the retelling for all of the Hogarth Shakespeare retellings of Shakespeare plays. I discovered that she is a huge Shakespeare nut, which having known her for a long time, I did not know. Uh, so having discovered that, then she and I were like, let's do this thing. However, she is in the middle of moving. <laughs> so we haven't quite figured out yet when we are going to have this chat, but it will be soon. But anyway, yeah, so I read The Tempest for aforementioned reasons. And I did also watch the Royal Shakespeare Company production of this, which is a, an excellent production. I highly recommend if you're looking for a production to watch. Royal Shakespeare Company. I mean, it doesn't get better than that. This has never been one of my favorite Shakespeare plays, but I did really enjoy kind of delving into some of the more new, the, some of the nuances of it. Now, like reading it more closely rather than sort of casually consuming it. And to the best of my knowledge, this is the last play that Shakespeare ever wrote, which is, it, it colors uh, your experience with it. I think, or at least it does with me. Um, some of the kind of, the way that the arguably main character, Prospero, kind of his the way that he kind of reflects on his legacy and how at the end, how he kind of asks the audience to judge him kindly because it's kind of up to them. His fate is up to them. And it's Prospero, the character, saying this, but it kind of almost feels like William Shakespeare saying it. Anyway, it's, it's an interesting play. Like, as with almost, not, not almost, as with all Shakespeare, there's a lot to pick apart and unpack. So it was fun to pick apart and unpack. It's still not one of my favorite, favorite plays, but I had a good time with this and I did enjoy it. Also, on Audible, there's, an, a, there's a dramatization of it um, or a dramatic reading of it that has a full cast. And Sir Ian McKellen of Gandalf fame is Prospero. Uh, and actually, and Benedict Cumberbatch is Ferdinand. So if you're into audiobooks, The Tempest. The next book that I read was Ariadne by Jennifer Saint. This book I read because, as mentioned many times, I'm trying to keep up with my Book of the Month Club books and therefore I am reading each month's Book of the Month in the subsequent month. This was my May Book of the Month, so I read it in June. And I didn't love it. I didn't hate it, 
but I feel a whole bunch of nothing. <laughs> I gave it three stars for that reason because I was like, I, I, there's nothing wrong with it. I just, I don't, I don't, it left zero impression on me. It has been compared to Cersei and I, 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 I'm not surprised at all. There is definitely a comparison to be made to Cersei, but Cersei is really, really good. <laughs> this is fine. By by setting up expectations, by, by making, by setting the bar that high, by saying this is like Cersei. I mean, I don't think that if that comparison had not been made that I would not myself have gone, hmm, this is kind of like Cersei, except not nearly as good. Like I, pro I think I would have thought that anyway. But yeah, basically if you're, if you're looking for a, a Greek, a feminist Greek mythology retelling to read, read Cersei, not this. If you're, if you've read them all and you're just like trash for that as a concept and as a genre, if that can be called a genre, and you just want more, this isn't bad. So it's sure, like if you're gagging for that, sure. But I, I, I just felt nothing the whole time for her, the character, and for any of the characters. And, and, and Greek mythology just does not interest me that much anyway. Ariadne herself is not a figure from Greek mythology that I would really want to know more about. <laughs> but I, I wasn't especially interested in Circe, the figure, before reading Circe by Madeline Miller. But I really liked Circe by Madeline Miller because Madeline Miller made me interested in Circe. So yeah, I, I, I didn't hate this by any means, but I have already mostly forgotten about this. So... <laughs> Next up, I read Deal with the Devil by Kit Roka Rocha. This was the Blades and Bodice Rivers book club pick for June, and I hated it. It's an urban fantasy that I think was wildly mismarketed because it is called a, the Mercenary Librarians series, but they are neither mercenaries nor librarians. The back of the book says Orphan Black meets Avengers, and it is not like Orphan Black or Avengers. It's just an urban fantasy, and I don't really like urban fantasy, and I don't like that. <laughs> Mainly just like a romance with some like urban gizmos and some action scenes. I, I didn't like the characters, didn't like the romance, thought the world building was nigh on non-existent. It was not my jam. Next up I read Hagseed by Margaret Atwood, which as alluded to before, this is the retelling of The Tempest, the Hogarth Shakespeare retelling. I really, really enjoyed this. I gave it four stars because I didn't think it was perfect. And I definitely think that you have to have read or seen The Tempest. To really get anything out of this. Like you you could follow the plot and understand what was happening more or less without having really any knowledge of The Tempest, but I don't think, it, I think it you would feel very much kind of like, uh, but why though? <laughs> if you didn't know anything about The Tempest, because it, it heavily relies on you knowing The Tempest and so you recognizing the parallels to The Tempest or the ways in which it's, like moments become significant because of the way in which they mirror The Tempest or things in the plot are foreshadowed in a way that is only, that foreshadowing only is apparent to you if you know The Tempest. <laughs> so if you're interested in this book, definitely familiarize yourself with The Tempest. You don't have to like be an expert on The Tempest, but just, just generally be like, watch an adaptation of it or quickly skim the play or whatever. Cause I don't think you can really enjoy this. You can understand it, but I don't think you can enjoy it if you don't know The Tempest. But as a retelling, I think it's pretty successful. The main reason that I docked it a star was because I didn't really like the ending. I kind of, I had a, a feeling of where I kind of thought this ending might go or what type of ending we would get. Not any specifics per se, but a general sense of the type of ending that we would get. And that was not actually the type of ending that we got. <laughs> I don't know if it's because it wasn't my expectation or because my version would be better. But when it didn't end kind of more the direction or tone that I thought that it would, I, I didn't like it. It wasn't what I expected and I didn't really like the way that it did end. It wasn't me going, oh, I wasn't expecting that, but you know, that really works. It was more like, oh, well, it's not what I was expecting. <laughs> so overall, I still think it was really excellent and very thought provoking and a really fascinating way to play with The Tempest. But. Yeah, didn't love how it ended and I definitely don't think it stands on its own without The Tempest. <laughs> the next book I read was a reread and that was Red Country by Joe Abercrombie because as mentioned many times on my channel, I am rereading all the first law books in anticipation of the release of the third and final book in the Age of Madness trilogy, The Wisdom of Crowds, which comes out in September. We're nearly there guys, I can almost taste it. Red Country um, was never my favorite and I actually docked it a star, even uh, docked it another star upon reread now. I gave it four stars originally back when I first started it and now I give it three. Unlike the heroes, which I gave three stars to the first time and now I bumped it up to four. This reread thing has gone well for some and not so well for others. In general, I still love all the first law books because it's the first law book. I enjoy it. 
I enjoy these characters. I enjoy Abercrombie's writing. I enjoy a lot about this. And I, I don't even know if it is like structurally in any way weaker than the others, but I'm not a, the hugest fan of Westerns in the best of times. And this is very, I mean, this is a Western. So it's kind of like the situation with like, the urban fantasies. Like I just, I don't, I'm not into urban fantasy. So the odds of me liking your woke if it's an urban fantasy are slim to none. If I like it, it's usually despite it being that. So similarly, I don't hate Westerns. There are some Westerns that I like. Um, I've never read a Western actually outside of this. And um, is Blood Meridian a Western? Yeah, that's a Western, Blood Meridian. Like I love the movie Tombstone. I quite liked 310 to Yuma. I like uh, the Wyatt Earp with Kevin Cosner. I like the Hatfields and the McCoys. What's it called? Is it just called Hatfield and McCoy? Well, anyway, that was also with Kevin Costner. So, I mean, I, I can like a Western, but it's not my favorite genre. And this is a Western. I think in terms of like evoking a Western vibe, it absolutely knocks it out of the park. Like this is a Western. It succeeded in the endeavor of being a Western. I'm just not a fan of Westerns. <laughs> and I like the characters. I like a lot of the banter, like the by far the thing that I love the most about Red Country is the banter. And some of my favorite quotes actually in all of the first law are actually in Red Country. <laughs> there are some excellent quotable quotes in Red Country. And Red Country remains the reason that we have my favorite short story from Sharp Ends. Like this, that short story is not possible without the context of Red Country. Yeah, gotta read Red Country so that you can read that short story in Sharp Ends. <laughs> but in any case, um, yeah, it was, it was fine. <laughs> I had a great time being with Stephen Pacey in the world of the first law, but it's not my favorite in the world of the first law. And no, you cannot skip it. You cannot skip any of the books. The last book that I have finished as well, I'm going to be working on Dark Age now for the rest of the month. Dreams of the Dying. I finished at one in the morning last night and this is one of the worst books that I've ever read in my entire life. I uh, went in detail in the vlog that I was filming while reading it and I've already filmed a best and worst of the year video and I don't know if it's going up before this or after this but either you're already able to see my slightly longer thoughts about it in that video or you will very shortly see my longer thoughts in that video but this book is just <sighs> style over substance <laughs> exhibit a <laughs> It's a gorgeous, gorgeous hardback book and clearly a lot of attention and money was devoted to the aesthetic of this thing. I wish more time and attention had been paid to the construction of the plot and the checking of the grammar. I ranted at length already, so don't want to do it again. I don't want to beat a dead horse. <laughs> and yeah, so all that remains for me to do is read Dark Age, but you already know how I feel about Dark Age. I doubt that will change very much in this then this reread, this reskim, this re refamiliarizing myself with it. But in any case, you'll hear some more of my thoughts on Alan's channel when we talk about it live. I think it's still called Febrising, even though that was only in February. I don't know. What the Red Rising read along is culminating in Dark Age, the end of this month, or technically beginning of July, I think. Anyway, those are all the books that I read in June. Let me know in the comments down below your thoughts and feelings about what I read in June. If I have inspired you to pick up any of these books, if I've discouraged you from picking up any of these books, if you agree or disagree with me, whatever you want to let me know. I post videos on Saturdays, other random times as well, but definitely Saturdays, so like and subscribe. Join my Patreon if you feel so inclined, or don't, and I'll see you when I see you. Bye.